Hello friends, myself Dr. Santosh Kumar Chobe. Today we'll talk about theory of computation. It is also called as automata theory. So what exactly this means? So theory of computation. Computation is nothing but processing. Now what do you mean by processing? In this processing, we'll take some input. That input will be processed as per the specified rules and then it gives an output. So this is nothing but computation or this is also called as a processing. Now to process these things or processing, we'll have something called as abstract machines. Abstract machines are nothing but a model which takes input and gives the output as per the specified rules after processing the input. These abstract models is also called as an automata. Automata is if it is processed with the help of some finite states that becomes finite automata. Let's take a very simple example. Electric switch. Now electric switch is initially let's say it is in off state. We apply some input that is some external pressure onto that button or that switch which we call it as a push. Once we push that switch it enters into a another state that is called as on state. Same way if it is in on state we push that switch then it enters into the off state. Now what are this processing is that this processing can be represented with the help of some model and that model as I said is called as a finite automata or it is also called as theory of computation. Theory of computation is made up of mainly three branches. One is called as automata theory, second is computational theory and third one is complexity theory. Now let's talk about automata theory. Automata theory is as we have discussed earlier, it is nothing but finite automata in which we will be taking some inputs. In some cases that input will be a string. Now this string will be processed and will be given as an output whether that string is accepted or not accepted. So this is some processing of input and giving an output. That output is either in the form of binary output that is yes or no or it might be uh, some accepting state or it is also called as ending state. This is automata theory. Moving up further, there is complexity, uh, computational theory. This computational theory is mainly talks about what kind of problems can be solved or these problems can be solved or these problems cannot be solved. So that is the computational theory. It classifies the problems whether these problems are solvable or unsolvable problems. So let me tell you in computational theory there are certain problems which are still unsolved. These are called as unsolvable problems. Now what is unsolvable problem or what do you mean by unsolvable problem we will be discussing in detail in our future sessions. Moving ahead complexity theory. This complexity theory it studies the cost of solving problems. Now let's say there is one problem and this problem might have multiple solutions. Now we have to select one optimal solution out of available multiple solutions. Now how I'll decide optimal solution? So there are certain measures of the performance of these algorithms. These measures are like complexity that might be time complexity that might be space complexity depending upon the resources that particular algorithm utilizes. Now we have to select an algorithm which has got minimum this complexity let it be time complexity let it be space complexity. So these are the three branches of finite automata, automata theory, computational theory and the com uh, complexity theory. Moving further what are the applications of theory of computation. First application we can talk about is recognizing patterns or pattern recognition we can call it as. Let me take a very simple example when we register for something it has been asked to enter the email address. Now we want to enter an email address but that email address has to be entered in some specific pattern that is there might be some combination of alpha alphabets there has to be an ampersand sign, ampersand sign or at the rate sign then there will be some alphabets followed by a dot and followed by again some characters. So that is pattern of an email address right or they can take another example of a password. Password is Again, it has got some restrictions when you enter a password. For example, minimum length, maximum length. It should be of 8 characters minimum. It should be of maximum 15 characters. Okay, And these characters has to be a combination. That combination might be of alphanumeric characters, one letter or some letter should be in upper letter. Some letter should be in smaller case. Okay, There has to be some special symbol. So it is combination of this. So it is actually a some pattern. Now whenever we are entering the passwords, it will check whether this password satisfies the given pattern or not. Here we can use automata theory or we can use the theory of computation. 
Second we can talk about is the designing compilers or interpreters. Again, let's take an example from C language. I'm having one declarative statement that is called as int space x semicolon. Now, as per the syntax of that language, int is expected to be a keyword and x is to be expected uh, an identifier. Now, when it comes to the compiler, whatever this statement is there, this statement will be divided into tokens. So what is a token? It is basically a smallest building block of any program. So that becomes a token. Now int is one token, x is another token. Now int is expected to be a keyword and x is expected to be an identifier. Now what are the rules of identifier? To make it simple, we can say that it has to start with an alphabet and followed by any number of digits. Okay, there are some other rules also, but to make it simple, initially, I'm just taking these two rules. Now, this pattern or this identifier is to be recognized by some machine and that machine is nothing but finite automata. It will check whether this token, which is expected to be an identifier, whether it satisfies the given rules or not. So here we can make use of automata theory of theory of computation. Next is designing and uh, analyzing computer algorithms or programs. Now what finite automata does or what theory of computation does is whatever program I have written, it will check this program whether it validates or whether it satisfies the given constraints of that particular language, what we call it as syntax. Whether that program satisfies the given syntax or it is also called as a grammar, whether it follows that grammar of that particular language. So these validations also can be done with the help of theory of computation or automata theory. Moving ahead, we can have uh, another application of finite automata that is called as studying formal languages and their properties. Formal languages, I have written some formal language for some finite automata. So I'll be having finite automata constructed, some machine constructed, some model constructed, and I will check what are that formal languages there. Again, that language is made up of strings. Whatever the strings are there in that formal language, am I satisfying the constraints, the properties of that formal language? So it will identify, it will validate the constraints of that language followed by the string or not. So for today, that's all. Thank you.